It's time for postseason lacrosse. As you're looking in live at Conway Field at Rafferty Stadium for this first MAC women's lacrosse semifinal, as the five seed Marist College Red Foxes take on the number one seed, the Fairfield Stags. Well, we've already had two quarterfinal matchups coming into this one as Marist and Siena both getting through their opponents last week. Now we're in the semifinal stage with the winners meeting up on Saturday at noon. And a pleasant good afternoon alongside Allison Gaskins. I'm JJ Duke. These two teams, Fairfield and Maris, they're no stranger to being here, and they expect to be at the semifinals. JJ, this is also no new territory playing in the championships for either program. For Maris, they have made it to the semifinals for seven consecutive seasons. For your Stags, the number one seed, they're the reigning champions from just the season ago. So both teams need to remain calm. They know what it takes to win these championship games, and it's going to be about the runs. It's going to be about the response on both sides. We take a look at our players to watch for this game, and Allison, we have key players for both sides. First, it's Samantha Mihalik, and she had an outstanding game in the quarterfinals last week. The junior attacker also leads the conference in goals per game as well as points per game. But you talk about that quarterfinals game against Manhattan. Well, she had 11 of her team's 15 total goals, and that is the best goal scoring for any Division I athlete this 2019 season. 11 goals. How about that? You'll see best on best today is for Fairfield. It's the MAC Defender of the Year in Megan Beach. And while she doesn't stand out so much in the stats side, she does everything on the little side of things right. The senior defender for Fairfield has actually been tasked with face guarding and defending the best attackers from each team throughout the season, and Beach has never disappointed. She is very deserving of that MAC Defender of the Year title. They won the MAC last year, but they lost to Loyola by a rather unflattering scoreline of 18 goals to two. They want to change that here. Carrie Garrity with the draw. And remember for Siena, this is their second time ever in a MAC championship game. They only won one postseason game coming into this year. That was back in 05 here in Fairfield. They've already won two this year, looking for three. Let's see if that goal from Taylor Mitchell off free position will open things up a little bit. A very tight second half. Goalies are putting on a show. Mishandled by McNeely, fronted by Holzman. She's got the lone yellow car on the day, Kathleen Holzman. Excuse me, my apologies, that's Pelcher in possession. Now McNeely. Has the angle. Was hit. It'll be a foul. McNeely a chance now at the free position. And for a number of these long possessions from both teams, I wouldn't be surprised McNeely goes for goal here. Five of 11 coming in today on free position, but still, you have to start to force it a little bit. Don't have to take out of system shots, but you want to change the tempo. McNeely right down Main Street will go. She does shoot. It's saved by Conquest. Gets a rebound and scores! Solo effort from Nicole McNeely. She's got four goals today. And Allison Olivia Conquest is only looking for help after getting the save. First shot wasn't what she wanted. McNeely staying with her left hand, gets really good pickup speed right off that center hash, picks up her own rebound in a fluid motion, cradles two times up top Sienna before goal, releasing. It would have McNeely. been impossible for Olivia Unassisted Conquest to adjust on that half. shot. She followed the That's ball the whole time, McNeely. but McNeely Unassisted coming out on top. Minutes, it's almost like a penalty kick in half. soccer. If the goalie makes a save, if you spill the rebound, you're looking for your defense to clear it away. Conquest does everything right. She just has to hope her defense wins the race, and they did. And McNeely, every coach's dream, follow your own shot. She did. So McNeely, outstanding individual performance. Again, nine points coming into this game in the tournament. We're going to do the draw again. Now, Fairfield have had Nicolette LaVista in the draw and actually featuring her in the offense as well, something that the Stags have not had all season long. But again, last game, one win away from the NCAA tournament. If it's not working one way, you got to change it. 
And Laura Field's doing it. Another reason, JJ, you will see coaches throw in some reserves, especially in a championship game, is that you haven't scouted the reserves. So it's something different that you're throwing at your opponent. No one has necessarily been scouting La Vista for Fairfield at the draw, but you put her in, a chance to rattle things up a bit. That'll be Fairfield possession as Caroline Mangan was taken down. So teams trading goals here in the second half. It took nearly 13 minutes for the first one to go. That's a foul, and that's going to be a card. McNeely cannot believe it. McNeely reaching with her stick on that first foul. Yeah, and it's going to be the one after this continuation where she goes right for the head, and you can't do that in this sport. A huge opportunity now for the Stags. They'll play an athlete up for two full minutes unless they score, then it is releasable still for Sienna to send another athlete back out. And here's that second one. It, it's the initial Sienna contact. Referee 18, right there. Very easy two call for them. Dangerous check at 1607 of the half. Dangerous That's check coming McNeely. from McNeely. Two minutes for a dangerous check at 16 minutes, seven Getting seconds the of the half. A lot of room on offense. Fairfield have had one player up opportunity. It was on a green card against Emily Fiorillo. Stags did not take advantage of it. No, they did, excuse me, they did get the goal off of it for their first two minute opportunity. When you're playing a woman up also, it's really important that you have good passing. You're able to spread a defense out. Then you can pick your lanes inside. So it's about that quick offense. You want to rattle up the defense a bit because you're always going to have an extra athlete open. So find that opening and exploit it. Pass in the middle, Gallagher goes high. A bit rushed. A good look though by Horning, now swooped all the way to the near side. Holzman free position. That's her bread and butter right there. If she sees it, she's going to draw it. Kathleen Holzman came today, 10 of 20 on free position. 35 seconds left in the possession clock, but a minute five left on the yellow card to McNeely. She's going to shoot, and she scores! Down low again, Stags two free position goals in the second half. Good execution on the bounce shot from this free position. You see Holzman keeping it in her right hand, knowing that she can't get a sidearm shot off, so she can't do the two quick steps and release. Instead, she has to take multiple steps, try to get in front of the cage before firing off that shot, going down low. Really difficult always for a goalkeeper to try to block a bounce shot. Holzman, 21 career points now in postseason play. She didn't play any games in her freshman year when Fairfield went to the semifinals. Had two goals in this 2017 semifinal victory. Then obviously a monster performance last year, 13 points in three games. And she's continuing that here this weekend. Had five goals in the win against Maris, a new career high. The response here really important for the Saints. Yeah, any little mini run right now. It, there's a lot of time, but any mini run is going to have big, big implications. Fairfield will get the draw. Mangan got taken down. La Vista having some issues, though, picking it up. So you'll allow Reynolds, much more composed hand at this stage of the season, to bring it in. And they'll have an offside as McNeely went across. So Fairfield now for a shot clock. Maggie Reynolds. Earlier this game became the second player in Fairfield history to obtain 30 draws, 30 ground balls, 30 caused turnovers in one season, the first in two decades, as Alex Kim did it back in 1999. At that time, Fairfield were in their program infancy. But to think, no one's done it since then, that shows how special Reynolds has been this year. This is La Vista. And you made an excellent point, Allison, about La Vista not getting scouted in the offense. I don't think even Fairfield knows what she's going to bring to the table. Obviously, practice is one thing, but game scenarios completely different. You just have to go with it. She's looked pretty composed, though, since entering the game. Underneath with DeVita. Fairfield looking for those cutters inside the eight. Big hit, and that's LaVesta. All league for Kellenberg Memorial High School. Freshman out of Glen Cove, New York at five foot six. This is a very much changed lineup from the Fairfield attack. 
As you see the foul, La Vista got hit up high. Mitchell just has to reset. Good defense there, shutting down everything inside that eight meter. Out of 15 on the clock. Gallagher weaving her way inside. Still Gallagher going. She's still going on and eventually, no, they're going to say offensive. There was a lot of contact in there, but Gallagher knocks down Therese Pittman. Gonna call that charge on Gallagher. We'll take a look back at it. I, I look at that one, Allison. There was contact, but it also looked like it was a bit of a push against Power to go into Pittman. But it's what the referees see down there. Might have been initial contact before that. Refs are also looking at the defense for the contact that they established. So as long as it's on ball, on stick, won't necessarily be a foul. But Fairfield once again getting the ride going. Siena, though, is 10 of 11 in their clears. That pass is tall, and Holzman takes it back. Unfortunate turnover there for the Saints. Fairfield now with another extended possession. They're starting to give the Saints a little bit of their own medicine here as Sienna had a lot of long first half possessions. Talking to Coach Laura Field for Fairfield. La Coming. Vista, excuse me, Allison rips that drive wide. Coming into the second half, she just stressed how they need to get off defense. And to do that, they needed to turn the ball over less to really connect on their transitions upfield. So far, they have done that here in the second. DeVita trying to play that low high game. She loves that two-player game with Kelly Horning right on top of Priest. Holzman back out wide. The patient possession from Fairfield. They never want to force it, but again, that might hurt them a little bit because they take a lot of time. Horning trying to fight her way in. She slipped to the ground. Referee right to have a no call there. As Holzman lost it, gets it back. That's a foul, but the clock keeps going. 15 seconds left. Fairfield have to hurry here. LaVista fires it inside. It's Horning, and she scores! I think Horton Allison thought that that was going all the way through, and it opened up the angle for Kelly Horning. How about that pass, though, by Nicolette LaVista? Perfect pass inside. She was able to connect, and that's where this play started. La Vista on the carry. She sees Horning. Horning immediately collects, turns, shoots. That's awesome connection there. Allison, that's Nicola La Vista's first career point. She's never had one until then, and how about that? Having it in the championship game as Sienna needs to take a timeout, and that certainly brings the Fairfield fans into euphoria. Fairfield in their home whites going from left to right. Villanova in the road blues on a sun splashed field here in southwestern Connecticut. JJ, one of the keys for this second half is really going to be that shot placement, shot selection, shot placement. Both teams getting a lot of looks on cage. Villanova with 22 shots in that first half. Fairfield with 19. These are, sh these are both teams that like to shoot the ball. So you want to see better placement, and that could be the biggest difference maker here in the second half. Well, another one has been the uh, upswing for Villanova in winning restarts. However, a couple of poor passes allow Fairfield to gain possession. Now can they clear and set it up? They do. Zach Ornstein has won the last few successfully. He went up against Will Kirshner that time. That was a good call by Beckwood just to hang on to the ball, let his attack settle into placement, just slow the game down, kind of control the pace. And remember, Mike Carano told us before this game that he wants his team to avoid giving up those big runs. That has been their Achilles heel this season. Well, they haven't done it yet. No team has had a lead by more than one goal. Strau goes behind Cage. Drake lost his balance, but fires that one wide. Actually almost tiptoed in the crease on that effort. It wasn't the most uh, cleanest of sequences there, but Fairfield will keep it. Still plenty of time left. Travis Ford fakes. Fronted by TJ Camizio. Goes low to Drake. 
Back out to Strau, who's not afraid to shoot it from this distance. He does, and he scores! Goes top shelf, where Mama hides the Thin Mints, and Fairfield take back the lead. That is exactly where Taylor Strau likes to shoot the ball again. You called it from way far out. Taylor Strau always is able to find just a direct lane in his shots to the opening of the cage. Does a good job there whipping it over from the left side. Uh, and that's one for Vitt, and it's same for Corsonetti earlier. They want those types of shots back from distance with time. Vinton tried to tip it over the bar, but he only got a piece of it and put it under the bar. So give Strau goal number 20 on the season. Strau is an absolute monster against Brian, where he had six goals and assists. He's had three hat tricks or more this year. Started off the campaign with a four pointer against St. Joe's. Long fight for this ground ball here. And Villanova comes up with possession. Again, wasn't the most cleanest of it. Looked like Kirshner had a beat on it for a moment, but Ornstein is now one, I believe this is five in a row for Villanova. Fair. Good hustle on that ground ball, though, from Wildcats. They've done a good job at really getting inside on those plays and trying to come up with the ball. And now an opportunity for Mike Carano's squad to go back to work on the attack, the 13th year head coach. With over 100 career wins at the helm of this program. He's guided this team to three NCAA tournaments, including an at-large bid last year despite falling to Georgetown in the Big East semifinals. They played Duke on the road. This one swung back out over Bay near side. Curse, extra pass underneath. That one goes in, ripping the twine on that shot, and we are back tied up. I believe that was Keegan Khan with the goal, but this goal was created from really good passing from Villanova. They opened up the left side, and yeah, Khan ripping it from still pretty far out over to the right side. Yeah, just worked a little angle for him to get a shot off, and Khan, last year the big goal scorer with 30 goals, this year being more the facilitator, that's just his seventh tally of the season. He was able to rip that one home. The freshman of the year in the Big East last year. Frankie Labetti now back on the dot. Ornstein was able to help it to his team as TJ Camizio swoops in to take it. Part of a really athletic family, the Camizios. Chet, obviously, younger brother, freshman on the team. As that pass gets deflected, Corsaniti takes it. An older sister, Kiwi, former dual sport athlete over at Yale for field hockey and lacrosse, actually utilized her grad year to play field hockey at Nova this year. So it's a Camizio family party down uh, just outside of Philadelphia. Of course, Allison, you called that game last year. Yale, Harvard, or Kiwi stuffed home. The winner in overtime in a 16-15 game, there are very few ways, or there are some ways, I should say, to become a hero in Yale athletics lore. Beating Harvard in overtime is one. That one goes in as Ford rips it home. Once again, Vinton tried to touch it over the bar, but it found the underside. Second goal of the game now for Travis Ford. The junior midi doing a good job here. Again, just whipping it up. He winds up from the right side. Unfortunate for Vinton because he was exactly where he needed to be. Yeah, give the assist to Strau. Just a little no-look pass into the alley and forward once again. This is a player who you don't want to say got lost in the shuffle a little bit last season. He started out well. Didn't see him too much in the middle to late portion of the season. Didn't really start the season as well, but now is coming to his own. And, you know, this is the guy that Fairfield expected a lot out of, and he is producing this year. Yeah, Ford is playing confident, and he's playing aggressive. What Fairfield needs is a face-off win right now. Zach Ornstein's done a really good job at the X. But it's been a lot of these elongated scrums. Labetti, Ornstein playing a cat-and-mouse game, but the pole comes in and takes it. Brody Laporte, now he's running. Cursed, extra pass near side. But that shot high, wide, and not very handsome like taken by Probisky, but it still stays possession of the Wildcats. For the Wildcats, they really need to get their leading goal scorer, Connor Kirst, into this game. They need him to really get one of those good shots finished off. That'll build some confidence for them on attack. They're labeled as a volume shooter. 
But Curse with seven shots has not found the back of the net. And that one taken away right into the cross of Samuel Murphy. And he'll gladly walk it across the timeline. Fairfield go to work. Yeah, you know, it's not to say he's a focal point, but he is a main point of the offense. Connor Curse and has been kept quiet this afternoon. Back with trying to go actually a 3v3 game. Passes far side to bouncer. Fairfield moving in transition. Good save, Vinton. Well, he missed on the last couple of them, but the bouncer was able to body and keep it in front. Yeah, I think that went off his midsection, doing a good job just sacrificing himself, reading the ball, placing his body where it needed to be to get that stop. They're looking like a catcher trying to block a curveball there. Stayed straight to it, absorbed the blow, and now Villanova back on attack. 